What do you think about insulin? Is it our friend or our foe? Type 1 diabetics produce no insulin at all, and if they don't inject themselves with it, they'll die. But can you ever have too much insulin? Could it be that you're walking around every day with 10 times more insulin in your blood than a normal person? Let's talk about it. From this point and throughout the month of November 2019, my publisher is having a special sale on an ebook version of my books, 60 Ways to Lower Your Blood Sugar and You Can Achieve Normal Blood Sugar. They're selling for $1.99 and $2.99 respectively, so here's a chance for some of you in nations other than the U.S. to get these books at a tremendous discount if you're able to download them. The sale ends on December 3rd, so don't wait too long. I'll put links in the description where you can click and go to some of the various websites that are offering these ebooks. Again, the books are 60 Ways to Lower Your Blood Sugar for $1.99, and you can achieve normal blood sugar, which will sell for $2.99. Nearly everyone knows that insulin and diabetes have something to do with each other. Type 1 diabetics have to give themselves insulin injections every day, and sometimes type 2 diabetics are told they must take insulin as well. And in the past, if blood sugar was too high, the knee-jerk reaction of most doctors was to prescribe more insulin and more insulin, or if you're not quite at that point, to prescribe medications that will literally force your pancreas to produce more insulin to get those numbers down. And so it was assumed by nearly everybody that all diabetes, type 1 and type 2, was a problem of not enough insulin. The answer was obvious. Prescribe either insulin or pills to make your pancreas pump out prodigious amounts of insulin. Of course, the time would eventually come that even all of this insulin couldn't keep up with your rising blood sugar, and so it was further assumed that this was just the natural progression of diabetes. You take pills or you take insulin for the rest of your days, and eventually they don't do much anymore, and then you die. But in the last 25 years or so, a new and radically different idea has been emerging. What if our problem isn't too little insulin and could instead be too much insulin as a result of eating too many carbohydrates and resulting in worse and worse insulin resistance? These days, the most popular doctor, author, and lecturer promoting this idea is a Canadian, Dr. Jason Fung. He dares to suggest that for the type 1 diabetic, insulin can indeed save and lengthen life. But he says for the type 2 diabetic, excess insulin may be more of a problem than a solution. In today's video, I want to go back in time, before Jason Fung had even graduated from medical school, and share with you some thoughts from a book by a man that really understood this whole concept of excess insulin before nearly anyone else. Now, when I was battling with runaway blood sugar in 2001 and 2002, there was no YouTube. Now, I know that's totally unthinkable to some of you younger folks, but it's true. All I could do to try to figure out what was going on in my body, besides test my glucose, was to read books. And of all the books I read, none made more sense and had a greater impact on me than this little book right here, which is my original copy from those days. It's called Protein Power, and it's written by a married couple, Michael and Mary Eads, who are both doctors. Now, some of you may be a little bit leery of the title Protein Power. Today, nearly all the low-carb doctors and nutritionists encourage a high-fat diet, not a high-protein diet. And I would agree, although I don't really monitor my macros nearly as carefully as many do. But most of the low-carb world would probably agree today that the idea of promoting protein over fat uh, wasn't really the best. But the book has really very little to say about protein, considering its title. The authors are far more interested in dealing with the subject of excess insulin and hyperinsulinemia as a result of eating too many carbs. And in that respect, they are dead on. 
Even though the book was written almost 25 years ago, it's as current as today's news. In fact, when I read all that they say about insulin, excess insulin, and hyperinsulinemia, it so perfectly matches with what Dr. Jason Fung is saying these days, I cannot help but guess that Fung read the book at some point and was powerfully influenced by it. Now, whether he did or not, I surely can't say, but I can confess this much. This book was a major influence in my life. If you were to look at the pages of this book, you would find all kinds of markings, blue marks, red marks, underlined sentences, and circled paragraphs. Without a doubt, I marked up this book more than any other book I read on the subject of diabetes. I can't possibly give you a full-scale presentation about the book. You can buy it yourself and read it. But in this video, I want to share a few of their quotes, especially about insulin, and give you an idea of the heart of what they're saying. Now, even though Michael and his wife, Mary, are co-authors, for simplicity's sake, I'll just use Michael's name when I refer to the author. Okay, let's get started. You don't have to read very far before you figure out what this book is going to emphasize. In the introduction, Michael states, We knew, as does every doctor, that the immediate effect of carbohydrate consumption is increased blood glucose, then an increased insulin level. As we studied the medical literature, we found that researchers the world over were finding elevated insulin levels associated with obesity, heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes, the common diseases of modern man. We also found that the same researchers were, for the most part, trying to treat these patients by giving them more of the same thing, that is, more carbs. It made more sense to us that if excess insulin indeed causes these disorders, perhaps patients would be better off reducing their carbohydrate intake, not increasing it. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? If you're trying to treat someone of alcoholism, you wouldn't normally be prescribing them two extra bottles of whiskey every day. And yet, for many decades, this is precisely what many of the so-called experts were doing with carbohydrates. They were telling people with vast levels of insulin in their blood as a result of eating way too many carbs to make sure and eat 50 or 60 grams of carbs at every meal and several snacks each day with more carbs still. I mean, can you imagine a wife calling out to her alcoholic husband as he leaves for work? Now, honey, be sure and drink all your vodka today. I don't want you coming home with those bottles still full. <laughs> well, in another of his opening statements, Michael Leeds declares that the amount of carbohydrate required for human health is zero. We can live perfectly well without any carbs at all. Now, nearly all of us who keep up with the keto diet and low-carb eating have heard this, but this was written back in 1996 when such a statement must have been considered nearly heretical. It's a wonder the Eads didn't get stoned for suggesting such a thing. Eads writes, Even complex carbohydrates stimulate large quantities of insulin because all carbohydrates are basically sugar. Various sugar molecules, primarily glucose, hooked together chemically, compose the entire family of carbohydrates. This means that if you follow a 2200-calorie diet that is 60% carbohydrate, the very one most nutritionists recommend, your body will end up having to contend metabolically with almost two cups of sugar per day. The solution the book proposes, of course, is very simple. Don't eat very many carbs. Cut the carbs, you cut the excess insulin, and you stop experiencing things like obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and hypertension. Dr. Ede says, Diet is what make insulin levels go haywire in the first place, so it stands to reason that dietary changes should be able to reverse the problem. Well, that's almost exactly what Dr. Jason Fung has been preaching to diabetics for the last 10 years or so, and countless diabetics embracing that simple truth have become former diabetics. Diabetes is a dietary disease. You don't catch it from someone else. You don't come down with it as a result of being out in a cold rain. You get it from eating carbs and sugars and more carbs and more sugars and still more carbs 
and still more sugars. Now, this next quote is my favorite of all. And if you've seen most of my videos, you've probably heard me quote it before, but I cannot possibly leave it out here. To me, this is absolutely the best quote I've ever heard about insulin. No other quotation, no other commentary or paragraph even comes close to my thinking. Dr. Eads writes, In the appropriate amount, insulin keeps the metabolic system humming along smoothly with everything in balance. In great excess, it becomes a rogue hormone, ranging throughout the body, wreaking metabolic havoc and leaving a trail of chaos and disease in its wake. So powerful, so beautifully written, and so, so true. Is insulin your friend? Absolutely, you've got to have it. But can it become your worst nightmare? You'd better believe it can. When you're going to work every day with five times, eight times, or ten times more insulin flowing in your bloodstream than what is normal and proper, you are destroying yourself and bringing upon yourself a host of health miseries, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, strokes, kidney failure. All of these are branches that grow out of the trunk of hyperinsulinemia. In short, far, far more insulin than what's good for you. Insulin, which should be your friend, has gone rogue and gone over to the dark side and is now your enemy. At one point, Dr. Eads discusses why it is that most kids can eat terribly, ingest huge amounts of sugar and carbs, and still stay skinny, and they don't seem to pay for their poor diet. His thought is that in childhood, the cells are extremely sensitive to insulin and the metabolic system is in near-perfect shape and can take a lot of abuse. But as they age, the situation changes. Eads writes, But age and their diet and their genes finally catch up with them. After 30 years or 40 years of growing older on a high-carbohydrate diet, their intricately meshed metabolic gears start to slip, and they begin to develop obesity, high blood pressure, and all the rest. By then, they will have an insulin problem. And, of course, he's exactly right. Most of us, as 10-year-olds, had no metabolic problems. We had no trace of diabetes. We didn't have high blood pressure. We took no meds, and we were not overweight. What in the world happened to us? Well, in Dr. Ede's words, our metabolic gears started to slip. What we could get by with at 10 years of age we cannot at all get by with at 45. Here's another of my favorite quotes. Dr. Eads writes, The root cause of all the metabolic disorders like obesity, diabetes, and hypertension is chronically elevated insulin and insulin resistance. There are no medications yet to treat this disorder. The right diet is the only remedy, but it works extremely well. I love it. I just love it. There are medicines to try to treat diabetes, of course, and high blood pressure, but there is no medicine that gets to the root of the problem, which is insulin resistance as a result of far too much insulin in our bodies. There is only one remedy, and that is diet. But the good news is that it works extremely well, wonderfully well, amazingly well. And that's why I get all these testimonies coming in every day from people who embrace the dietary remedy and found incredible results, including an A1C level leaving the realm of diabetes and destruction and dropping down into a normal area where most, if not all, the diabetic symptoms and complications have packed their bags and left town. To quote Dr. Eads once again, the right diet is the only remedy but it works extremely well. Well, what's a diabetic to do? Dr. Eads writes, Your tasks are simple. Reduce the amount of insulin circulating in your blood during the day and restore the sensitivity of your tissues to insulin. The quickest and actually the only way to achieve metabolic control is to restrict the amount of metabolically active carbohydrate you put into the system. In one part of the book, Dr. Eads spends some time looking at the diet of the ancient Egyptians. These were some of the first of the ancient societies who became almost totally agricultural. 
They devoted huge sections of land for wheat production and came to eat massive amounts of bread and bread products. Their bread was all whole grain bread. They also ate a lot of vegetables and fruits and very little meat. In short, they were eating the way nutritionists have been telling us to eat for the last 60 years or so. We've been told that if we eat a low-fat diet with lots of vegetables and fruits and whole grain breads, we'll never get heart attacks, we'll be healthy all our lives, and we'll live into our 90s. And by this logic, the Egyptians should have been the healthiest people in all of history. But they were not, not at all. They were often overweight, they had terrible tooth decay and gum disease, and they had a lot of heart disease. Yeah, you heard me right. With this low-fat diet, this whole grain bread diet, they had heart disease. Eads writes, When paleopathologists dissected the arteries of the Egyptian mummies, they did not find smooth, supple arterial walls, but rather arteries choked with greasy, cholesterol-laden deposits that were often calcified, exhibiting an advanced stage of atherosclerotic disease. Many had arteries that were scarred and thickened, indicating the presence of high blood pressure. What makes this book Protein Power by Michael and Mary Eads amazing to me is that one, it is so dead on about the role of excess insulin brought about by a high carbohydrate diet, and two, the fact that it was written long before the guys that you know and appreciate, guys like Dr. Fung, Dr. Eric Berg, like nearly all the keto promoters and me, knew anything at all about it. No doubt about it, we have to give major kudos to this forward-thinking couple whose amazing insight about carbs and excess insulin led the way. They were pretty much a lone voice in the wilderness, but today we're catching up and realizing that what they were preaching was exactly right. Yeah, they didn't seem to appreciate fat quite as much as we do today, but they sure understood carbs and insulin. And by the way, I'm talking about them as though they were dead, but they're very much alive. If you type the name Dr. Michael Eads in the YouTube search box, you can find quite a few videos that they've done. But of course, I'd encourage you to also get the amazing book, Protein Power. I'll put an Amazon link to it where you can order it. And get out your marking pen before you start reading. You'll need it. They also have written a number of other books, so check them out. Okay, that'll do it for now. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, so it'll be promoted to more diabetics who need to hear it. And consider subscribing to this channel and then click the bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless. See you again soon.